Officials with a Japanese electric power company have applied for a government safety screening to restart a nuclear reactor. The facility in central Japan is in a region that experts say could be hit by a mega quake. A vice president of Chubu Electric Power Company filed the application with the Nuclear Regulation Authority. He wants inspectors to examine safety measures for the number four reactor at the Hamaoka plant in Shizuoka Prefecture. The utility halted operations at the government's request following the Fukushima nuclear accident nearly three years ago. Crews have been enhancing the disaster resistance of the site, including the construction of a 22-meter high seawall to protect the facility from tsunami. We will respond sincerely to any questions from authorities on safety measures. We will do our best to explain the safety of the plants. Power companies across Japan have submitted safety screening applications for 17 reactors at 10 plants. All 48 commercial reactors in the country are currently in Japan flying. are pushing through strong winds and trudging through a carpet of snow. A second major snowstorm is less than a week slammed into the Pacific coast. Friday morning, heavy snow began falling again in wide areas, including Tokyo. Many struggled walking, especially up hills. I finished my work an hour early to go back home before the snow gets heavier. I can hardly see the road. It's too slippery. The icy roads have caused thousands of traffic accidents across the archipelago, leaving at least two people dead and hundreds others injured. The severe weather trapped a number of tourists on their way to the Ise Grand Shrine in central Japan. Some in the area have experienced their first snow warning in a half century. The storm has paralyzed transportation, delaying Shinkansen bullet trains and forced airlines to cancel hundreds of flights. Delegates from more than 140 countries have gathered in Mexico to discuss nuclear arms. They plan to talk about how the weapons affect people around the world. The second international conference on the humanitarian impact of nuclear weapons opened in the city of Nayarit. Five survivors of relatives of victims of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings spoke on the opening day. Everyone should listen to the survivors, pleas not to repeat the mistakes of the past. We ask people everywhere to take the first step to create a nuclear-free world. A delegate from Austria spoke of Japan's complicated position on the issues. He said any country under a nuclear umbrella will have difficulty speaking about the weapons, but he said the country has a unique perspective to contribute. Well, I think the involvement of Japan, of course, is extremely important, being the only country that has uh, uh, been affected directly by nuclear weapons. Last October, Japan signed a UN statement saying nuclear weapons should not be used under any circumstances. The country's leaders had previously avoided signing the document because it went against the reliance on the U.S. nuclear umbrella.
Residents of the Marshall Islands are also committed to telling others about the dangers of nuclear weapons. They've spent decades dealing with the aftermath of atomic and hydrogen bomb tests. And their president says all those who have experienced the tragedy of nuclear bombs should unite to tell the world how inhumane the weapons are. NHK World's Mitsuko Nishikawa reports. People living on the Marshall Islands have seen firsthand what nuclear weapons can do. U.S. scientists conducted 67 atomic and hydrogen tests there in the 1940s and 50s. And residents of the Pacific Islands are still dealing with the after effects. More than every century later, our people are still haunted by the painful events. This year, Marshall Islanders are marking the 60th anniversary of the most devastating test. U.S. forces tested a hydrogen bomb in the Bikini Atoll. The device was 1,000 times more powerful than the one dropped on Hiroshima. The islands were under U.S. rule, but the government gave no warning to those living near the test site. The U.S. says more than 250 people were exposed to high doses of radiation. The nuclear fallout hit the crew of a Japanese fishing boat near the site. One member died six months later. President Christopher J. Loyuk marked the anniversary of the test by visiting Japan. And he told people that the scars from the test are far from healed. We still see people who uh, have uh, uh, health, uh, continue to have, have health problems, and uh, a lot of uh, people are still exiled from their home islands, and we don't know when they will be able to return to those islands. Loyak says the nuclear issue is at the forefront of his foreign policy. He wants to see the weapons banned. He's planning to visit Hiroshima for the first time this weekend to connect with people who can help spread his ideas. One message that uh, is very important us to tell is that people should never go through this kind of uh, experience again. We've been trying to tell the world about it, but obviously we have not been really successful. Anti-nuclear power campaigners gained some traction after the 2011 accident in Fukushima. And U.S. President Barack Obama has said he wants a world free of nuclear weapons. But Lowek wants to see real changes. He says people should never forget that nuclear weapons shatter lives for generations.